leads to suit that. Yeah. yeah. I, I just remember reading a couple of people who were like, I don't really understand what happened at the end with the story and stuff. And it's like, I, un- I, I understood it. Yeah, yeah. A little bit, a little bit. It is kind of... They have to change it up so there's actually like a finish point to this Yeah, part. exactly. It's not just like, oh, and we all leave. And there's like no conclusion. Yeah, and, and it's like... Like, mm, that'd be weird. Now you just need to wait for the next game. Yeah. To, for uh, for uh, the don't, actual... I don't think it'll be that long in between games. It'll probably be, a year. be like a year. It'll be a year, I reckon. Because yeah. they've already got like the engine and all the assets and yeah. that sort of shit. All, all, yeah. they, all it is is like maps and new and characters. And like voice acting. Yeah. Um, and and just, new... yeah, putting it all together, well, basically. I imagine they would have kept going yeah like yeah they, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, most they, of it would be they already started i remember reading they started as soon as they fully finished the yeah yeah that yeah. one so oh, yeah, it's just the next in show. development yes but um i i like remember the, talking about all the assets and the tools yeah. they need yeah but the next game though i remember talking i think to robbie i think it might have been you as well luke mm-hmm. i was like how are they going to continue it are they going to start again where you just start from level one or like yeah, starting yeah, yeah. level? It's like, or they do like is... Kingdom Hearts where you have amnesia. <laughs> yeah. Like. I don't know. Systems are pretty good. They would be able to pick up probably. I think yeah, like, they, they might they be could, able like... to pick up on your save data. Yeah. Like, I'd you know say how, so. And do you know how like in Dark not, Souls You can have stuff? like a pre-generated start. Yeah. Mm. But uh, I understand like, um, what Robbie was talking about as well because in like, the, at the end of the game, you're like, you're strong. Right? Yeah. You're like level, you late think, level 30s. I think 30s. it's level 50, I think. It is. Read. But it, when you finish the game, you're generally you're around like, late 30s. Yeah, yeah. About 36, 37 is when I finished. Yeah, okay. And I did all the side quests and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but I went down the same. But, yeah, but you you know, all the your material, like you got, I've got, I had Firegar, Thundergar, Blizzard. Yeah, yeah, because normally you don't get that till way later. Yeah, way later. So I, I totally understand if they like set it back to. They add new levels like Blizzard. <laughs> yeah. It'd be Blizzard plus. Blizzard plus plus. Mm. <laughs> I don't like that system where they just add like a plus or a number. It's like, fuck, that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not like. It's, uh, it's not clever. No, but I do think it'd be probably more better if they started at a lower level again and then. Because I think. As a game, it feels better when you start a game at lower and then you build up to yeah, like yeah. rather than starting really strong. Like yeah, you want to gain things as you level up rather than start and just plateau. Yeah, that's it. I will admit though, sounds good it, to go. We've got, got to go. <laughs> good to go. Mate, I'm just interrupt this. G2G has got to go. Yeah. What's good to go then? Oh. <laughs> That's right. It's G2, good to go. G2G's got to go. See you, Rob. Nah. See you, mate. Nah. It's all, right, it's, Roll down it's, time. It's all oh, yeah. part of interpretation. Now, is this, just is this really the time up? to be rolling down? Yeah, are we? Right. I'm <laughs> saving, my, I'm saving yeah. my life. Yeah, yeah, no, it's perfect for you because you are down time. I'm uh, still wrapped right. up. Huh? You wasted your luck. Oh, Mon, wasted your luck as well. Hey. I'd like to think I started my luck because last game I no. rolled absolute terrible. That was your one good roll. Yeah, and you was... are up first. <laughs> oh, what? Really? Yeah. Oh. Alright, more so... of averages, bro. You're fucked. Just, <laughs> just in case it happens, <laughs> when it comes to the two ancient dragons fighting each other, their legendary resistances aren't going to take place because they're both legendary creatures nipping at each other, so we're going to rule that out. I mean, that's fine. Cool. Mm. Um, really question, Brad. Crazy. Is Final Fantasy VII before or after Advent Children? The movie? Before. A- Advent Children's after. Yeah. So the, ah. the, the game is before Advent Children. Yeah. It's, so like, a, Advent it's Children, like a sequel. It's like a year or two later. It's, or yeah, it's two to three years, I think, afterwards. Oh, okay. Yeah, after like... After the finish final. of seven. Yeah. Is the sunglasses guy in it? Yes. He's rude. Funny. Oh, he's rude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, or, um.
Hello. Hello, friends, foes, and familiars. How are we doing tonight? I am Dragons of Cats, and welcome to Dragons Group D&D. We are going to be having, hopefully, a really nice session tonight. I don't know why my chat hasn't come up on, uh, on Streamlabs. There it is. It's probably because it's just a bit too small, so I'm just going to spam that real quick. Hashtag for a streamer. And now I need a stick. As you can see, I know what I'm doing. I do not know what I'm doing. I'm quite tired. So let's just jump into it straight away. We've uh, gone around and meeting each of our cast members. We'll start with uh, BM Curfew. Um, Brad playing Amalia, the Asami Eldritch Knight. Woo. Next up, we have Pro. Hey, I'm. <sighs> Oh, man. I'm role playing the um, <laughs> role playing Ikram the Asami Druid. <laughs> Next up, Viridian Knight. Hi, uh, I'm V. I am playing uh, Nakaf, the Draconic Sorcerer. And finally, we have uh, Bone Weaver. Well, hi, I'm Rob playing uh, Ikram. <laughs> I'm Luke playing Casimir. The teeth that so much sooner than, than I did. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this in rehearsals, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, jumping straight into it. Previously in Dragon's Guru D and D. Uh, after sneaking into the Iron Keep, the stronghold of the Iron Circle mercenary group of uh, the Cult of the Dragon, our heroes faced off against Sharax the Seer, a green dragon taking human form, who in the party's attempt to stealth um, prolong their arrival, had managed to kill a dear friend of theirs. As sword and spell waged against um, this dragon in human form, an unknown fo force pulled the white dragon veil out from Casimir's uh, Casimir's cube and uh, creates a portable uh, portable hole, which it then drifted towards their foe. At the moment of a war-stopping roar that echoed over the Battle of Law and crashing through the roof, the ancient white dragon, Beatrice, charged through the chapel ceiling. The pale eyes now sickened to green as she released a mighty blizzard from, of her breath onto the party. Casimir called to Macaf to use the veil while Ikram charged the seer and Amalia inflicting critical damage to a scale of invulnerability. Reaching for the veil and locking eyes with her ancestor, Macaf feel the hold on Arby's mind break away, to which Macaf felt a comfort took form of a dreamscape surrounding the draconic sorceress. Witnessing this, witnessing the silhouette of Catherine Red through this dreamscape, she was praised by Arby, to which Macathon saw apparitions of one similar to the dynamic of Arby and the Red, until she found herself confronted with the first white dragon. Of Alara Thora. The first white dragon, her words provoked the calf to not let others define her to be her true self, protecting those she loves and care about. Coming out of the vision, a sleet storm swirled around the calf, her body changing to the reaction uh, at the reaction of the veil coming into contact with the born of the same blood as the first white dragon that also donated a part of itself to the creation of the veil. A more draconic form appeared from the flurry of, from the fury of frost as the tiefling's horns shattered like glass, wings twice the length emerged with the tail as thick and strong, standing at a height of eight feet with slicked a slick head crest like horn atop of beautiful strong features. There stood someone new and unsure. Avi looked down and, and gave thanks to her great granddaughter 
and joins the fight against Sharax. This green crystal ball floats from behind Avitris's head and orbits around Sharax's now mighty draconic form. Though smaller than Arby, her spells and defenses have been have proved difficult. Sharax uh, has been able to keep Amalia restrained and fends Ikram off with her mighty wings, attempting to take to the sky to fight Avitris. And Arby beats her wings, throwing the seer's flight off balance and back down to the ground. She then rebukes the ancient white and the druid by banishing, uh, banishing them from this plane. Amalia lies before Sharax, aware of her uh, invulnerability scale, while the others are protected for the moment behind an awning slash bus stop of force. Because it's got three sides correct, and then like a roof over it, and then one side's open air. Yes. So one to the... Okay. Cool. Right here. Yes. Open side. Yes. Now, let's just get some. Let's just get some. Re, let's just get some fun music going up. And first up will be Amalia. I am going to attempt to flex and break out of this hold. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, yeah. pitch, uh, that's how you have to get out of it, isn't it? Because you're bound like, like this. You up, yeah. yeah, so it's like, I just have to flex. I'm just like, fuck you it. Are in, you are in your um, angelic form, are you not? I am. Oh, okay, oh, I'll give you that then. <laughs> but I mean, that doesn't give me any, anything to the checks and stuff. So. <laughs> but essentially, at this moment, so much no, <laughs> essentially, at this moment, everyone has wings. Yeah. Everyone Except has wings. Because well, no, he's banished. Because he's banished. <laughs> Just my wings are laying there. <laughs> Where he was, he was just like a, so waiting thing. for him to come back. <laughs> so, as you're a strained creature, uh, your speed is zero. You can't benefit from, from any mm-hmm. bonuses to your speed. Attack rolls against you have advantage, and your attack rolls have disadvantage. And you also have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. So, you're yep. just restrained. Yeah, but I can't move anywhere, no. so I can't get to anywhere. So I'm gonna break out. I'm gonna try to break out. All right. So you lie there prone, trying to flex out of it. <laughs> you are prone from Sharax's wings. I remember blowing you down to the ground. Strength check. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Flexed. Pretty good fucking roll. As a great start to the night, how? Yeah, lay it on us. What happens? Give us that. Give us that imagery. Oh, just literally just <laughs> bound up. She's just wings and all. Just it just shatters everywhere. Just boof. As the iron band just shatters to the other side of the room. As the iron bands curl and break away, electricity just sparking off you into the time being from your uh, from your lightning haste. Still mm-hmm. like a bonus action and me extra action, me extra action, Big. and me movement, and you move. So in the same moment, doesn't... it explodes. She just tw- uh, spins up in the air about fifteen feet, faces Sharax, pretty much holds a blade in front of her, and just arc of lightning straight onto the um, scale of invulnerability she's gonna try to attempt to stab it alright then go for it make an attack roll you are at a minus 5 penalty to attack I remember that bang oh that's yes. well. uh, 22 on the 20 on a 22. Oh no. You thrust the frost brand long sword, ice and lightning combining together to try to pierce in through this scale. And at that moment, that point in time, you see just the fraction of a crack that you created before 
expand and fissure. A little bit of it breaks off, a little bit of the rune, uh, the sigil glyph, the magic inside it dissipates as well. Nice, because there's also a D6 yeah. lightning damage and also a plus 14 damage for my Ooh, um, Meridian right, Soul. This is going to bite you in the ass at some point. I don't get it. Starting strong. <laughs> Starting strong. We need it right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. You need it right now. So how much uh, total damage is that? Uh, so 19, 25, 39. 39. Oh, all right. With that, cool. the scale. First in front of you. Noise. And she just looks down at you in horror, just as she reels back. Anything you want to do for your bonus action? Um. No, I don't have anything for my bonus action. I'm good. Mentally, you hear her scream. This scream in your mind. In, in your conscience is then focused into uh, something that just pierces into your uh, mental state. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw and you're at advantage because of heroes faced. Heroes faced. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So this is a fourth level mind spike mm. as a legendary action. So you're going to take half damage of 17 so you take seven no, points eight. of psychic damage mm -hmm. no wait that's wrong eight so eight yeah you take eight points of psychic damage also does sharks have to do a concentration save for the banish uh heck yeah she does so... it's 39 damage so that'd be is that 19 19 Didn't yeah make? half damage all right concentration uh constitution saving throw yes Oh, damn. 21. Yeah, dragons have pretty good Yeah, points. I know. I know. <laughs> but I mean, there was a chance. It was, still, it was a high. It was, it was, it was a, a good chance. chance. It was a high DC. All right. Ikram, you find yourself uh, surrounded in a incredibly dense forest. You were like an ant on the, at the, on the floor of the Amazon. Brambles, vines, and roots all pushing up, surrounding you, trying to basically force you to be stuck in place for the moment. As you are banished in a little pocket dimension in a fucking swamp. I mean, not really complaining about it, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> would, I be aware, would I be aware that it's banishment? Um, with everything you know, I'm going to say yeah. Especially okay. being with Casimir and a lot of extra planar activity since you do... Uh, you I've can. cast it before. Yeah. Oh, actually, okay. actually, Carl, mm -hmm. with Mage Slayer, uh, when you damage a creature that is constrained on a spell, that creature has disadvantage on the saving throw it makes to maintain, as well. So, just for future reference, I know she already she Thank technically you. saved it still, but just She's let you know for future. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, with that, you do realize that you are banished, and being banished sucks. <laughs> If you're just okay. basically there being pushed along. The I mean, it sucks, but like this could definitely, I could have been banished in a lot worse situation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you could have, could have been straight up killed. Absolutely. True. Casimir. Right. Hmm. Casimir, do something. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're not my real mom. Well, I mean, you uh, would have seen her scale. Shatter. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. This is an incredibly bright light um, that from her chest just breaks. Do we know if she's used up her legendary saves? I don't remember if we have... Because we've seen them before on other like dragons mm. and stuff. But I don't know if she's used any here. No. Okay. I don't recall anyway. She's been relying on her defenses. Yep. Okay. Plus, I don't think we... She's had to make too many saves that she didn't make. She's made a few saves, I think. But she's she's had to make a just... few saves, but they, they, most of them have been absorbed. Oh yes. yeah, because she. Yeah. But now it's going to be different. Okay. Um. Hmm. 
you can see that floating around her head is the green uh, is the green crystal ball that came from behind of Avitrius' head so, and it's still floating there around. That's the one that's been absorbing spells, isn't it? Uh, no, this one came from the back of... Uh, that's what was controlling, it seems. Yes. Ah, but now it's not controlling Avitrius. No. Is that the only orb left? It's the only orb you can see. Yeah, no. okay. Because um, you haven't done anything to any orbs yet. You know they're there, but you can't see. They weren't damaged by any like AoE spells, were they? Because they were all absorbed. They were absorbing it, yeah. <clears throat> Fuck. Those orbs are really annoying. Can I? Hmm. Do I know if banishment can be dispelled? Because it's a concentration spell. That's a very good question. Let's see. What does dispel magic say? Choose any creature, object, or magical effect within range. Yeah, you so can have because to. because I can't target like the banishment because Rob's being like teleported away, but can I target Sharax because she's concentrating on it? You know what? <clears throat> no. <laughs> Damn. Because <Damn. laughs> yeah, I don't know how that works. <laughs> yeah, I don't... That's something I haven't come across. So I'm just going to rule it down as a as a as a no. That's, that's, yeah. That's that's one fair. Thing. That's kind of weird. That's a bit. It's a bit of a stretch, that one. Yeah. It, it'd be different if, it, like, if it said in banishment, you left like, like something in the spot Behind, you yeah. were. Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm like. Mm. But that would, if if there was something that you left behind, you could dispel it and then you appear back. I'd get that. But if yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. it's just nothing. They're just gone. Then <laughs> yeah. It's like. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Um. Uh, Mon, you're on deck next. Well, um, well, if magic isn't working, can I try and restrain Sharax? Just do um, you do have, like I did with the. You do hmm? have your um, coins floating around too. No, no, because I used the wall of force. Oh, force. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, he lost his pennies. Yeah, so I want to. Like I did with the Toby Kodachis, I want to like wrap around, like steel uh, cables around her wings, and then make them real. <laughs> oh, okay. Does she Just try and restrain her flight. flight. Uh, I don't know. The Toby Kodachis didn't. It's not really because you kind of just like make an illusion and then make it real. Put the, the ability on the, the chat for me. Uh, well, it's major image, but the... this is and this reality. Ah, uh, semi reality. That could be a good place to live. Semi reality. <laughs> so it makes the object real, but it's. It's made of like dark matter, basically, yeah. from the shadow fell. So it can still, she can That's still like take an action to try to realize. It. No, oh. it's not an illusion. It's completely real for oh, a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would you? It's, lose... not, it's not even a spell anymore. It's just, it just takes the illusion. Yeah. Okay. And makes it reality for a minute. Yeah. With that, um, so you use so it. I could from... do. I could only target one of the wings because it's a twenty foot cube for major image. Yeah. So you'd still wrap around. Disable that. I just want to like yeah, just wrap up one wing so she can't fly basically. So you use an action to activate that. An action to manipulate the image, and then a bonus action to make it real. All right. So as Casimir uh, from his bracelet pulls out uh, um, a, a illusion that then manipulates into a chain, just, these, so these shadows just sort of run along the ground and then up and wrap around, and then form into these chains, and then. Come real. You see that wing just 
pull in. She just like looks at him and goes, Wow! What? Um, so yeah, she's she's uh she's at half flight. Actually, then, no, she can't fly now. And then I'm just gonna <laughs> go back to the edge and just grin up at her. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Next. You can see a bit of yourself in the reflection. It's an incredibly new experience. How do you feel? Um. She. See herself. And probably unlike the. Um, when she was holding the uh, scepter at um, the arcane brotherhood mm -hmm. um, in which she was really scared of when it started transforming her arm into a more draconic arm. This, I, I don't think she's paying too much attention to it. it it's just... I think inside she's really scared because she's like, shit, uh, now I've transformed, don't want to end up like Belvin, got to keep it under control. So she's trying not to like freak out and do too much. Um, uh, damn, I just don't know what to do because it's unlike Casimir. I don't really have anything that can... Okay, make me an arcana check. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, this is oh. hard for spellcasters. Yeah. It's like, I cast but a spell. At least it gets you, absorbed. You've got your okay. illusion, so you can kind of... Still be flexible, yeah? Yeah, I'm just like pure... Pure magic. Big dick damage. <laughs> 25. Alright. On a 25, I'm going to... I don't know how to describe this in a... In a actually, no, I can't. <clears throat> I don't know how to describe this, but you do mm. something. You feel something. Okay, so... Essentially, you've been uh, between the casters of the group. A lot of you have been slinging spells that require the target to get out of the way or to resist you haven't been throwing you haven't thrown any spells that require you to take aim do you get what I mean so so like making a uh, decision spell attack we've been doing AOEs basically yeah not targeted not and they targeted. say like saving throws instead of yeah. Spell attacks. Yeah. Do I kind of get that sense when I'm looking at the orb? Like I should probably go for the. Yes. Try and try and break it, almost. Oh yes. So especially with that arcana check, you know that even uh, crystal, magical crystal balls, they are still fragile magical objects. Being targeted is hard to do, but can be done, and they can be destroyed. You know this for a fact, because you've probably broken a couple of crystal balls while you were young. Yeah, but usually they were in my hand and I just went BAM! Exactly! <laughs> uh, ooh. I'm thinking something like a chain lightning would work, but there's only two... Lightning's a save though, isn't it? Is it? I think so. Is, you do have Frost Vortex, which is, which is a melee uh, range attack. Oh, uh, yeah. Whatever that means. I don't know what you just said. <laughs> like a, ra a ranged attack, <laughs> yeah. you target their AC, whereas yeah. other spells, they need to make the save. Okay. So uh, spells that will target them, like their AC, should yep. be effective. Okay. Um... Uh, 
There's so much. Oh, no, there's even more text. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you through it. No, it's okay. I was just reading through Frost Vortex. I'm like, oh, God, that's a lot of text. And then there was a third paragraph. It's like, fuck. Yeah. Um, it's got a bit. It's got a bit. It's got a bit. Um, yeah. I... What's... Uh, Let's, yeah, she's going to cast a Frost Vortex, aim it at the sphere, Mm -hmm. but it should get Shyrax. Yep, so in in the AoE effect of it. it Yeah, cool. Right, so if you're aiming for the green crystal ball, you can definitely do that. Or if you want to try to hit another, it'll be a disadvantage. Because you can't see it. But you know there's a series of... Uh, I know there's a series, but at least I know if I can destroy one, what it takes. Yes. Kind of, to to, to do it. Uh, I'm going to cast it at fifth level. I've still, I've still got... Um, I've still got basically all my sorcery points, which I need two. All right. So, as it just oh. hits the just nicks to the side of the small, tiny crystal ball, no bigger than uh, what you'd find uh, for yourself. <laughs> it's flying around at the speed, and your little uh, frost vortex is swirling at it, clips it on the side, and erupts. <laughs> Sharax has to make a constitution saving throw. That damage actually looks very nice. Look at all those fours. That's a lot of damage. A lot of green. Lot of um, also, I need to add a plus five to that cold damage to the end because Whoa. of chronic sorcery. Yeah, yeah chronic sorcery. So add five yeah. to that. So an extra 11, that is 40 points of damage. 40 points of cold damage. <laughs> Okay, so with that, you do see the green orb shatter completely. As it just goes floating around, freezes loose and cracks midair and just turns to glass before shattering into frosty mist on the ground. Now, I need to make a series of saving throws all around. Can I, can I also say that she would be... Uh flying like above the the wall of force oh yes because she's 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 above yeah with your massive wings now too your flying speed has increased can increase for a minute as well from 30 to 60. Mm-hmm. um so first up is dexterity dexterity saving throw for sharax so she's gonna fail take the full force which is 40. And because of your frozen soul, the damage is fucking massive. And with that, she is also under the effect of slowed, aka frost blood. Yes, that that's right. Fucking ocean, ocean. How does it fail? <laughs> and she just freezes up along the back arch of her neck and um, her head and her left wing. She's, uh, yeah, becomes. It's like the world's worst fucking brain freeze for her. It is literally that. <laughs> I need to make five dexterity saving throws. So one. Succeeds. Two. Two. You see, some, oh. you see something go to absorb a section of the frost, vacuum it in, and as it vacuums it, vacuums it, uh, goes to suck the magic in, you see just mid-air something like glass window shattering at the back. Oh, like a light bulb or something. Yeah, like a light bulb just going that tried to absorb magic and blow out the back. Nice. So that's, that's two. Another, oh. another one just <laughs> out of midair. Yeah. <laughs> and you see her eyes blink twice. Actually, I need to roll. I need to roll. 
I think so right twice. Should it, do they take half damage if they fail if they succeed? Yeah, they're gonna take half they're gonna have to take half damage. But you can see that they're frosted over and travelling incredibly slower. Okay. So now they're all visible because now all of them because have of the a frost. Layer of frost. <laughs> and just one more for luck. The very last one fails as well. So one more for luck. <laughs> so that is I need a piece of paper. Um Wait, four of them failed, right? Four of them failed, correct. Yep. Yep. So two only two saves. Okay. So that is the uh what did I say it was? So it is the crystal ball or I need to edit something while I'm doing this just so I know it's <laughs> Dead. You see the green board. Dead. I now need to make a roll. Uh, you see more of a... Um, from that light bulb, it was more rock that goes scattering down and falling onto the ground that's being... Um, instead of glass. As it's blown out. Okay. And now I need to roll D basically um, D4, re-roll on a 4. Re-roll on a 4. 2. Yep. You see her... Yeah, you see her blink twice and the milk whites of her eyes seem to lose some magical film, some magical protection it's just it's a very slow recession as her eyes reel back and she just uh, and she begins to look around in a panic you can now see that there are two I believe two out of six meds save there was seven in total oh, okay. one of them's just wrapped around Friend. Hmm. It was. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, she also needs to make a concentration uh, saving throw. Mm -hmm. 20. 20. She makes it. She <laughs> saves. Um, at, the end of, at the end of her turn, in her panic, she can't see. Oh. And she's looking around, you can see that she has this panic look about her. So she flails her tail out wide in a massive swing. This is going to be a disadvantage to hit um, just out into the air. So uh, let's just take a look. Let's reach on it. So it's going to be more of a sweep more than anything. I mean, I'm the only one that could hit yeah. <laughs> in a panic of a 14 you just jump over that tail swinging around denied nope uh, coming around from the back of the uh, from the back of the awning as well Otar looks up at if Ota looks up at you. That was incredible! And she then uh, uses her own firebolt to try to blast at one of them. So I'm going to roll a D. What am I going to roll? One, two. Yeah, D2. Reroll. So basically, that's a reason. Alright, so. Heads. Okay. Was it heads? On a 21, it goes flying. Actually, no, it's got a minus 2 to its uh, AC now. Because of Frost Vortex. Ooh. Ooh. A powerful spell. Uh, so she's basically slowed. And that's going to hit. And that's going to... You see one of the other floating orbs shatter in the air. Uh, 
clouds, basically into steam, just blowing apart as Sharax's defenses in an instant have crumbled. Uh, at the end of her turn, Sharax um, again is going to. When's Arby's turn, by the way? Arby's in the elemental plane. I was really going to say. Time. Doesn't doesn't matter. Oh, she got banished. She got yeah. banished. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we chilling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> chilling in the swamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't see her. You don't know where she is. Okay. Love and life. That's fine. I just thought she got forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, and that's that's uh, Otar's turn. Sharax, in her panic, we just need to look at Frost Vortex real quick. So, excuse me, uh, V, while I just take a look at the spell. Thank you. So, she's under the slow effect? Yep. So, she's lost all reactions. She has minus two to AC and disadvantage on deck saving throws. And she can either attack. Use an extra bonus yeah. action. And it requires a concentration check to cast spells. So she's going to she's going to roll a con- concentration check. And the DC is McCaps, which is twenty one. Oh. Oh, there's there's the one. And as she's looking around, she turns behind her and rakes through the rest of the pillars and the glass. You see that there's a uh, fickle slash of magic go through her claws as she's attempting to focus, channel her magic into creating something through the air. And as she turns in doing so, the magic fails in her panic state. As she basically runs forward, not being able to see, runs out of the building. And isn't there a wall there? She just destroyed it. <laughs> and there was a large stained glass window there that was also hard uh. in the way as well. Pretty sure, yeah, it wouldn't take much for an no. ancient dragon to burst through a wall. No, so the ancient, the so the giant, so the gigantic ancient dragon of, of Yogasharax charges through. the... Just half speed too. Half speed, yeah. So she's only moving, only moving twenty feet. Which is not but, much compared to a body. <laughs> not much. She's. Slowly trying to reach away as the frost is covering her scales, she's trying to pull away uh, out to the battlefield outside. You see that the iron soldiers are turning around and seeing this. I'm gonna roll a d20. I imagine they saw the uh, the giant white dragon fly in the roof too. <laughs> yeah, and on a 15, yeah, they do panic and they know Sharax as a woman. So there's a bit of a friendly fire that goes on. Mm. As at the end of the at the end of her turn, arrows begin to pelt down and shoot at her, but in their panic of suddenly seeing a green dragon not knowing who sides on who, uh the arrows just deflect off her tough scale. It's still incredibly strong. Amalia. Amalia? Right. Alright. You guys just <clears throat> destroyed her. Amalia's gonna uh, catch up to her. Uh, just pretty much just zip straight outside and pretty much land straight on her back and just go for a full stab you still see that there are two crystals floating um, around her head but yeah 
those around. Oh, I can I can see them. They're frosted. Mm-hmm. So you can, oh, okay. You can see them. All right. If I can see those orbs, I'm gonna go to each one first. Just just like go for attack on one, then to the next one. All right, make an attack roll. It is going to be at a minus five to hit. Ooh, okay. Actually, it's going to be at a minus three to hit. Ooh. Going to use a luck die on that one. That's better. better. For the first one. <laughs> <laughs> I need to roll a D2, so odds are evens, so odds is going to be that. Yep. So with that, you feel resistance as your uh, blade cuts through the um, frost, the invisible frost form floating. Um, kind of as, as in you're cutting into steel or something. But with your lightning haste, um, you're moving so quick that the vibration of the blade and the electrical surge of energy just cuts through it. Uh, you see, as the invisibility wears off it, it's another iron ball, uh, iron dance ball, that cuts in half and falls to the ground. Yep, and then pretty much straight after that motion, she's just zipped straight over to the next orb now. Same thing. Okay. Bang! Piercing into your mind. Nice. You hear a telepathic communication. Just a scream saying, No! Stop! <sighs> As Longsword hits something and it just shatters in the air and the message is completely cut off. The telepathic message is null and void. And then still got one attack in the same moment. Pretty much quickly just zip straight down onto her back. And pretty much... Cutting it, okay. Uh, I'm just... Just for flair, she's going to sta- stand on her back. She's going to sheath her sword. She's going to raise her, her hands up in the air. And as a bonus action, I'm going to use weapon bond. And a large great axe appears in her hand. <laughs> yeah. And, and she's just going to go fucking wailing on her back with this great axe. Yeah, go hard. Monster hunter. <laughs> full on. It's full on monster hunter. It's, it's, monster a, hunter. it's a giant slayer as well, a great axe. So it looks pretty monster hunter like yeah. as well. Ooh. I'll use another luck die. I want this to work. I want this to work. Damn it! <laughs> Not meant to be. Again, um, it is a giant slayer against a dragon, and it's just... Uh, if this was a giant, you'd be carving through flesh, but the scales are just a bit too resilient. Mm-hmm. Well, I still have my extra action, so <laughs> go <on> again! <laughs> so there you go. Make another strike. Just go on here going ham wow there you go it just wasn't meant to be yeah um, so it's tough ham huh it's tough ham yeah an absolute yeah. blunt look at that seven five and four uh Ikram is in the other plane of reality sorry now so good I'm in so it's fine okay uh Kazmir uh, happy dubs. Sharik's looking. She's looking really beat up. Make an insight check at advantage. Ooh. Okay, dook. 23. <laughs> so that magic she was casting was a teleport spell. Uh, uh, she was looking to open a gateway <laughs> to bear out. Well, she fucked that up. Alright, how yeah, far... I'm just going to move Sharx just back in here <laughs> oh um, I forgot to mention with her 
basically destroying that door in the process of it, um, the roof is beginning to collapse and fall in as the support as basically two thirds of this building have been absolutely demolished. So everyone, including Sharax, can make a dexterity save. But isn't, wasn't there already a massive pole in the roof? Oh, yeah. yeah all above us was. Yeah, all above you all around. Um, where is it? Because it was like. Yeah, it was around there. It was all open. And then we're, yeah. under, we're underneath the wall of force anyway. Except for well, not, Otar's not. I'm I'm not. I'm no. actually above. Oh. oh, okay. So if Sharax was making a deck save, so I would have had to have well, as well, yeah? So you would have to roll, so Sharks is going to right. make it a disadvantage. Um, everyone but Kazmi will have to make one. It's the roof basically comes collapsing down. <laughs> nice dodgy crew. <laughs> Sharks is at disadvantage with a four. We'll learn from my mistakes. Uh, what was it, sorry? <laughs> uh, dexterity saving throw as the roof is crumbling down around you. Uh, Ota's on a nine. So, <laughs> so let's see... Yeah, Brad, uh, ugh, Amalia, and uh, Kath, you both succeed. So you're going to take half damage. Yeah. As the roof comes collapsing down, you're not knocked prone. Uh, Sharax, however, is buried. Basically, um, her rear end is uh, a support mate falls down on that. She takes 21 points of bludgeoning damage and if she got knocked if she got knocked prone this would have happened before Amalia's move I'm gonna say it's only happening now because <laughs> I fucked up oh okay because I was gonna say if she's prone then all my attacks would have been advantage then Hello. I'm on to you <laughs> I'm on to myself uh, well honestly even if they were advantage those rolls I probably would have missed either way so it's all good <laughs> so um, are we taking 10? Uh, 10 damage yeah you'll take cool. 10 damage Rotar doesn't look too good as um, rock as the brick workers and um, warning for support strats have basically closed on down and begin to crash down around you all okay Sharax also needs to make a concentration check. It's 10. <laughs> I don't think she can fail at 10. She's got a plus 14. She cannot. <laughs> uh, Kazimir. Alrighty. Um, well, I'm going to see that she looks pretty vulnerable at the moment. So I'm going to use 30 foot of movement plus a misty step. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to cast that sorry all good. Uh, so i'll get up to here i want to get basically under a body can i see where the the scale was broken yes it was just uh, above her left uh left breastplate uh, yeah like just up around the clavicle area of the dragon just underneath that can i toss out a handful of coins <laughs> you can toss out a handful of coins and animate objects. So I'll drop the wall of force. Okay, wall of force drops. Uh, so I get 10, 10 coins and I'm gonna send them all straight at where the scale was broken. She cannot counter spell you either, fuck. <laughs> you can't use a reaction. So. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> well, I'm guessing there's another reason. <laughs> and, the... and these are at advantage because they're melee attacks and she's prone. Yeah. So I... I'll just do this twice and then assume it's just advantage, basically. Uh, so... So the save is uh, 19. Actually, no, uh, 18, it's 20. Yeah, it's 20. 20? Yeah, so I got a plus eight to hit. So anything twelve or above will hit. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, five hits. Yep. Damn, I rolled really bad on that second one. Twenty-four. 
20. For 29 bludgeoning damage. Okay, she's gonna have to make a save. Against 14. No, <laughs> she, she can't fail it. She can't fail it. It has to be 16. <laughs> yeah. Can't beat a concentration, unfortunately. Yep. Well, uh, so how, much, how much total damage was that? 29 bludgeoning. 29. With that, she is basically at a point where she's just <sighs> trying to claw forward. Um, okay, anything else? Uh, no, I'm just going to keep the coins just pretty much surrounding, just circling the... Where the scale was broken. Okay. And now. I believe they get opportunity attacks if she moves. Yes. She can't move. Yep. <laughs> that too. It's kind of stuck. All right. Uh, next. You're right. Okay. So. Uh, how bad is Ota looking? Uh. She's not looking. She's fairly beat up. As well, she got a couple of nicks and bruises, but she's still in fine fighting form. You know she does have potions on her. <laughs> not just like standard potions. Don't wait. Yeah. Um, do I see any way here that looks like it's everything has already collapsed, so it's kind of safer? Because I don't. I was thinking of dimensioning door door us out of the chapel but there's arrows being fired already so that's yes. probably not a you great idea that, yeah you do know that you are surrounded on all fronts by the iron circle still okay yeah she doesn't want ota can mm, but she is prone ota's a big girl ota ota's a big girl ota's a big girl you know she has like three Greater healing healing potions on her. Yeah, she does. She's also very hardy. She has that cool orc feet. Also, I think you death watered her. No. Um. No one here has death ward. No one here has death ward. <laughs> oh, okay. Me. Minerva and Belvin have death warded each other. That's true. <laughs> right. So. Ah, uh, oh. She looks at um, you and goes, I'm fine. I'm all right. As she pushes off the large beam that fell on the top of her. Basically yeah, that's, that's, that's fucking comforting. <laughs> um... Oh, I don't know what to do. I know I can basically do anything and it'll be kind of okay. Mm. I seriously don't know what to do. <laughs> That's okay. Um, oh, there's so many spells. Uh, make an insight check for me. Insight check. On an 18, you can tell that Sharak is on death's door. She is more than likely blind. Uh, she does look like she's in a fright and running away. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I've picked up on that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just figuring out what to do. Um... No, I don't want to do that. Uh, 
sorry. It's okay. It's all good. I'm sorry. It's all good. No need to. No need to be I... sorry. You're all good. <laughs> oh, hello, hello, Neon High. Hello again. How are you doing? Good to see you. Thank you for sharing the video of uh, Doctor Robotnik uh, pole dancing. That was uh, that was that was brilliant. If no one's seen that yet, I will definitely show it to you because my gosh, it's hilarious. I'm gonna use. You said, do I have to activate anything to use that sixty? Um, sixty feet flying speed. Are you already? I have already act. Basically, it was already given to you uh, on birth of this new form. So you currently have it. Okay, I currently have it. Um, I'm going to use that to go the full 60 feet. So I'll basically be above her here. Um, Cone of Cold would not... Would it hit... Has me because it's a cone. Uh, well, if you're above, I don't think it would. It would, it would uh, especially if you're blasting directly out in front. I know it would not, if it, especially if it was, from an angle. Yeah, if it's slightly angled, it shouldn't hit Casimir because it'll still be too small. Yeah. So yeah, Casimir would be protected from, uh, from, okay, the, cool. from the cone. Uh, yeah. Then I'll use. Um, Just need to something. Just depending on how. I don't know if kind of cold can be cast at. Are can you... be cast at a higher level. Yes, um. We want her like pretty done. Don't we? We're not. We didn't really come in to capture her. Yeah, we we're not here to fuck spiders. We're here to kill yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, level seven it is. Good night. So that's 57 points of damage overall. Oh no, you've got the plus five already. Yeah. So just 52. 52. If she fails. But still what? 26 mm. if she succeeds. Ah, oh, it's a con save. So. So. Um, Sharks here. That was a Go that can save. Twenty. Ooh, <laughs> fail. <laughs> fail, 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 fail. Boom. On that much damage, fifty-one. No, was it fifty-two? Fifty-two. 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 Oh, and uh, she casts it like a breath weapon as well, sort of thing. Even though it's not a breath weapon. But she does cast it like one. I need to roll some dice. <laughs> cool. As well, as you told me how you want to do it, you inhale, breathing in gathering the energy into your chest and you just erupt blasting it down onto Sharax uh, her already half frozen frost blighted form trying to crawl forward it's about she, her head's about to go across the courtyard um, and ran into the uh, castle wall where you can see at this point the iron soldiers that have turned on her basically in confusion around their head uh, a green halo uh, green rambled like uh, flower crowns have made them stiffen up and turn back to fight out over on the wall as your breath exhales and covers her upper back her wings which basically turns the membranes that uh, to glass that then chips and flakes and falls away. The frost goes through the scales and catches her as she 
slowly tries to raise her head and let out a as she freezes over. And there's a one last toxic gas that comes out of her mouth. <laughs> Ikram arrives back in the scene. <laughs> the Rifutis arrives as well. I'm just sitting there with like this fucking bowl of like assorted bugs and berries and shit. Just chilling. <laughs> oh, hi guys. As Sharax looks over, there is. Actually, in her frozen form, there is strange quiet that comes from around the castle you can hear, before she died you could hear the sound of Delissa's fiery orders being shouted but as you look up onto that battlement where the crown of green were around these, uh, these soldiers heads you see that shatter as that last poison last poison's breath is exhaled from Shara's and there's confusion on the soldiers' heads. They don't know what to do. They pause fighting. They hunker down up on the battlements and they don't know what to do. They are confused. At that point in time, you see a injured, a injured tabaxi running across, uh, basically running past a bag of nails. He's incredibly injured, he's not wearing any armor, he has slash and arrow, uh, slash marks and arrows hanging out of him, and he's in a panic. He sees this and just... And we're gonna take a break. Woo! As combat has halted. Yay team! Good work, guys. You survived! Good guy, Oof. Oof. Die for a bit that was stressful. Could have very simply <laughs> went the other way. It very, it very could have. The good thing was we started strong, I think. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yes, we will be right back in about 15 20 minutes uh, for the last section of Dragon's Brew DD uh, for episode 109. One oh nine. Yeah, right. Stick around, we'll be back.
Hello everyone, we are back. And we'll jump straight back into it. We just left as uh, the one and only our draconic sorceress inhaled a massive breath of elemental fr uh, of draconic energy and released this blast of frost freezing Sharax in place. A war still goes on around you. Even though you can see that the soldiers um, along the wall are in a panicked state. Combat right here for the moment has ceased. Um, Amalia after is going to just fly straight up in the air. Right? And she's just going to yell the top of her lungs. It's like... Iron Circle! Your leader in Seer has been slain. Drop down your drop your weapons now and cease this senseless war. You have been defeated today. What check do you want to make for that? Intimidation? Or persuasion? I mean I'm gonna say intimidation. Yeah, okay. And with a, a Reese for your teeth behind you, just going... <sighs> letting out an epic roar of same proportion. Are you saying... You make an intimidation check in advantage. We'll see how that goes. Not bad. Not bad, not bad. Not bad. With, initially in front of you, you can see that on the roof, um, engaged... Well, flying around the iron, around the iron keep, there are two wyvern riders on wyverns, and they basically notice you at this point. They basically turn on their wyverns and begin to bank, um, bank east away from that, away from the keep. A lot of the soldiers too begin to put down their arms as everything begins to go silent around the keep, especially in witnessing this. Um, at first, ballistas are turned against, uh, are turned against you. Uh, a blister bolt is shot off across the air, but you dodge and duck out away from it. Uh, Vitri, Arvi just looks over towards it and blasts the tower into frost. 
I was just going to say, Amalia at that point had her hand up. To, she was about to cast Lightning Bolt at the Ballista, and then she's, she's like, okay. Fair enough. White Dragon uh, looks at you just... You'll, you'll have to let me know when a minute's passed as well. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, yeah. I will. It's basically, you have, what? 20 seconds left, pretty much. Uh, okay. So you've flown up, done that, and you'd be coming down. Yeah. What does everyone else want to do in that time? Um, I'd be picking up the remains of the shot of it, uh, the scale of invulnerability. Pick up the remains of the, uh, the shards of the scale of invulnerability. Um, is there also the shards of the, because I know the mask kind of fell off into... I guess pieces. Yeah, it's like, fr um, crisp, like a sh like sh shattered crystal. If that makes sense. Mm. Up around where it is, but it's uh, more it's like broken up quartz. Yeah. Um, scale. Yeah, McCaff will pick those up and bring them to Casimir. And just kind of look at him and go. I think I broke it. My broke what? She's giving you the shards of the mask. <laughs> oh. Hmm. Kaz is just gonna basically do like a head to toe like scan <laughs> of like the changes of uh, the cap. Be like, hmm, interesting. Just sort of, yeah. He's sort of lost in thought. Like, I'll what chuck, happened here? I'll ch sorry, I forgot to. I'll chuck something in our chat that might help. I think of something. Uh, during that time, the... actually, yeah. Wait for that. During... Think of think of something like like this. Yo, check your chat. Okay. Mm. Uh, new art. <laughs> I've had this for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, during that time as well, the... Um, the box, the adamantine box around uh, oh, yes, Hansel. <laughs> yeah. becomes less real and dissipates as well. While... Uh, uh, <laughs> Ikram. I uh, like beckon Ikram over to come help Sandstorm because he's unconscious. <laughs> yes, he is. He's unconscious. And I don't have healing magic. Ikram is currently, uh, as Ikram is currently a dinosaur. He's a dinosaur. <laughs> Grr. <laughs> Grr. Grr. Not gonna scare him awake. I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> if you if you want to uh, transform back into your angel angel self, you can. But you are mm. barely beaten up. Well, I was going to say, it depends how long your angel forms have got left. It wouldn't be long. No. Be however long you have left on your haste. Yeah, I know. It, that's, a minute, I think. That's what I mean. It's not long. Yeah. It's probably got... Oh, I was, I was changing. It's probably got like yeah. 10 seconds. Take Just reset everything. Three, Three two, two, one, <laughs> and... And I'll use that. Um... <laughs> you just see, like, um, a wave just kind of push off her and just lightning just into thin air she just drops down to her knee breathing very heavily sweating um uh my calf will f fly over to her and make sure she's okay yeah. otar comes to the side and be like yeah that's incredible this is insane. It's alright. It's just a repercussion of 
the spell. All right, lightning, just a little, little fatigued. The, the lightning bolt in the field. I've been uh, working on this for a couple of years now, actually. What a perfect time to bring it alive. I'm glad it worked out. Ikra, make me a medicine check. No, walkers. Because you see there laying on the ground, it's a sandstorm. 16. He has had a massive talon, or a massive dragon claw, both slashed up his back and shoved into his chest. He is... He's been dead for a while. Like dead, dead. Oh, dead, dead. Um, does greater restoration fix that, or? <laughs> Why are you serious? Wait, is that a legit question? Well, I was thinking of using healing fires. <laughs> he's dead. No, he's dead, dead. He's, dead. he's not no, unconscious. He's dead, dead. he's dead. This needs a re resurrection, reincarnation. Uh, well, I don't currently have that one ready. Oh, oh, mass cure wounds and <laughs> really? heroes feast. I got firestorm. Will that fix it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it'll fix the problem of the Look. corpse. Not in the way you want, though. <laughs> Look, uh, well, Rob, there, there is a few injured people around as well, apart from the dead sensor. Yeah, true. You begin. To I might just use mass cure wounds. At that point, drums out. As the drums come out and you heal everyone around you for 20 points. Um, that's too dramatic. Yeah, that's really. I was like, what the fuck is like the boss's next form? <laughs> it's fucking dry, Sharax. <laughs> the fucking bones. <laughs> dry, Sharax. Oh. Uh... <laughs> Don't worry, my brother had a very, my brother and I had a very solid conversation about dry bows the other day of what actual Bowser is called. <laughs> if skeleton, if the skeleton of Bowser is called dry Bowser. The science checks out. This one checks out. So, as the healing goes around, uh, Ikram, you notice that there is a, uh, as you're casting, there is a pulsing light coming from uh, one of the um, coming from around the side of the body of the frozen Sharax's form uh, within this 30 seconds that's good that's passing at the moment Avitrius has basically taken off back up into the air um, basically just being like I need to uh, you know get out before <laughs> Anyone mis, uh, mis identifies me as an enemy, so she's gonna fly up. Basically, dominating the area. But you do notice that one of the crystal balls that were basically shattered, its remains laying on the floor, is flickering like a light bulb uh, or, or like a heartbeat, pulsing. Just Kazmi, you then notice um, the energy source as well, especially being underneath them at that moment. Sure. Full moments around them. Mm -hmm. um, can I I'll cautiously go over? Like on guard? Yeah, I'll come over with him. Gather the pieces. Um, it is a crystal ball. It is a crystal ball of uh, mind reading telepathy. Upon closer, ins upon closer inspection, you uh, have read about these kind of crystal balls as well. You just through the delicate patterns inside what the remains are. It seems to have a little essence remaining, and you can hear in your head, and then everybody else can hear her voice again. 
His eyes may be blind, but I still see. And a final glimpse in the future which I recede. One for each before I leave. The one channel I was in mostly on the calf across this telepathic network. The Red's legacy still lives in you, despite this. The small village still thrives thanks to your parents. The Zonthal Tower awaits. The Crimson shall guide you through Red's maze and to her resting place before the star-cloaked elf continues to long for affection and the disillusioned oplex. Focus then moves towards Kazumi. The ritual is ready. The war was to prolong your advance. Severin was never here. The astral sea for the edge of reality. To the void. Thanks to his Thean friend. Follow the girl. She will lead you to the source of her majesty's horn. To Amalia. Your master and his killer await on the southern field of the keep. The one once bound to the dread and rot has been relinquished and aims to be a hero of legend. They have his sister, and in place of the mask, only the strongest connected to the Dragon Queen will supplement one of her aspects. Then focuses to the group. They have been waiting and debating ever since your awakening. Shot. It was never divined you'd become a factor in her return. And Pratantha is blind by his hate. But you will see the light that guide all to the aspects of Tiamat. That light will come from reaching out from the last god plate which he protects. The arrow has been here for this reason. There was no future in which you would not find it. I just made sure it happened. The voice fades out shattered sphere glows dark it's magic spent why would she tell us that That's what I'm thinking. Sorry, I'm just throwing down shit. Why would she tell us that? Like, why would she help us? Make me inside check. Uh, I'll make it inside check. From the cube? Uh, 21. 21. Not me. You can make an inside check as well. If anyone wants to, they can. There you go. Natural 20. All right. Um, He knows all. Yep, from the natural 20. As a diviner, she is a seer. She is one who peers into the future and sees all aspects of reality. Um, especially when she made the mention of prolonging your advance to 40 in Colt's plan. She basically waged, helped wage this war as a sacrificial pawn, knowing her position in full devotion to her queen looking into it you see that there are faint carvings around where sandstorm lay 
very, very faint, as if she was attempting um, some sort of sacrificial, uh, sacrificial summoning, and especially making mention to uh, the Dragon Queen team at herself that she was watching, and especially with the um, crown of Mesro laying before you as well. Mm -hmm. That she was uh, using as a focus, which you know can restore be uh, mortal beings to life from the other world. Yeah. She was basically working on knowing her position of being a pawn in the cult's plans, with several overall success in the return of Tiamat, mm -hmm. as she had successfully performed. form of the sacrificial ritual dedicated to team that will channel through one of the gems of the crown of Mesra. Oh, yeah. It's a lot to take in. Are these gems still around? Yeah, the crown is still there. The crown, okay. the gems are all still in the crown. The crown still sits atop. Atop? <laughs> uh, atop the altar. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, Kaz would collect that. And turn to the others and say, we should probably get out of here. Uh, some of the Iron Circle may not surrender, and it's best that we don't get surrounded. I can take us out of here. Uh, Macaf will take one of Sharax's scales. Well, we don't need to worry about <laughs> that we can take the whole thing <laughs> she'll pull out the the um, young green dragon scale and put them together uh, I've made a promise Kaz would ask uh, Otar to bring Sandstorm's body Since uh, Amalia's pretty exhausted, yeah, she's easily able to um, put the glaive over her back. Uh, basically, it locks into her armor, and she picks up Sandstorm with relative ease. And Kaz would teleport us back to the camp, wherever he knows there's like a. Bit of a clearing because he wants to bring Sharx's body. Yeah, you can do that. And like once everyone's gathered around, with that you do. Teleport. And Kaz, did you take the sphere or the sphere? The one that was communicating. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. What was left of it? Because yeah. it yeah. seemed like it, it was, was just like on its last ebb. Yeah. yeah. Was the remains of be. the crystal ball. I, d I did take whatever I could. Like the yeah. the crown, I made sure we brought that too. The crown, got mm -hmm. And with that, the party bamps off just out to the clearing behind the command tent, to which is in full hysterics. It is going People are just going nuts at the moment. There are there are calls for reinforcements. There is word that um, they're surrendering, but the south flank is still pushing. Um, the leaders are all in debate. But when someone goes in and tells them that you've returned with a frozen gigantic dragon. They rush out instantly. A lot of them just staring. As you're approaching. People around you are just in awe of this sight. One uh, one soldier, a young a young a young half elf, uh, hazel eyes, deep dark, uh, deep brown hair in 
some bone cheater arm, cheating armor. Basically goes, who is that? Where is that? What is that? Follow the out. Speaking in Elvish to a to a human, and the human's just like, uh. Larry speaks up finally. You can't, Shrax. <laughs> when the battle is won. There is a cheer after that that uh, echoes around through the uh, that echoes around through the campsite at that point. Um, you see that the Arcane Brotherhood mages uh, begin to cast sending spells, sending word out to the rest of the troops out in the field and to the rest of the commanders, and the word begins to quickly spread around as the Iron's, uh, Iron Circle does begin to um, basically begins to surrender as a lot of you uh, are coming over to Amalia a horde of alliance soldiers lift you up and throw you up in the air and cheers um, Casimir coming up to you Lariel bows to you and then turns to Ikram bows in a deep thou so deep is incredible and to, to McCaff grabs your hand and goes you McCaff the arcane brotherhood was a wonderful do they brother. recognize that she's changed though actually no she takes that back she then looks at you and just looks you up and down and goes um, a little taken back um, a lot of the leaders are in fact even um, Delirit doesn't even realize uh, who you are. You are a completely different form. You were completely different from the calf that left just an hour ago. And even um, King Melandric looks over. And who is the new draconic friend? These red and white, white red and white scaled one. Who is this? I, I didn't realize you could make friends. I heard about making friends on the battlefield, but still. He says it kind of pompous and snooty. Uh, That's too cheery. Kaz will let McCaff introduce herself, I believe. Just kind of. I was Macath and then I use the uh and, and she has a more gravelly more draconic there's a, a hint of draconicness to her to her voice so she has a bit of that gravelly-ness when she speaks now um I use the white uh, dragon helm to protect us um uh, unfortunately uh, uh Arifatis was mind controlled and when i brought her back something clicked something that wasn't there um but that doesn't matter now i think This might sound really weird, but I have memories before I was taken from the Brotherhood now. It was really weird. It was like sharks had seen it, but now I see it. Anyway, long story short, hi. I'm new, basically. My name's Antis. She sort of reaches out her hand. Like this big draconic hand compared to everyone. Yeah, even Lara looks for it and just her small dainty. She is only like five four. She <laughs> is small, so she is just looking up. Her hand is the size of two of your fingers at least. Sure, uh then um uh, now Auntie's will sort of uh kneel got sort of get on one knee to greet her and sort of bow. 
It's a, it's a pleasure, and you've changed so much in a short period of time. Well, I'd just like to say congratulations to all of the Court of Riverguard for an amazing success. It's at that point that she looks over and notices as uh, Otar's coming forward in full force. Best get a cleric. Anyone. And basically presents Sandstorm to the leaders. To that, then here to decide the bag of names. And then you change the music. Yay, Sansom's dead. Yay! Ding dong. No, we're not. No. <laughs> Stop. <sighs> Why are you, you were sneaking through. We were ambushed in the skies. The G Force is no more and captured. exactly did they take you? Underneath the keep. But we weren't that long. They didn't care about me or claws on strings. They tortured the tieflings and left. Do you know if they're still there? No, they vanished into thin air. Magic. The cult has Osa. Them for their blood. We've seen the things that they use tiefling blood for. That should be our next up most priority with that blood. It just makes all this so much worse. Larry for the moment we should we should separate our thing. And this is dire times where we will put our best spies and agents to find them. I appreciate your humble condolences, but right now our leader is dead. And we have two very powerful in the arms of the cult people. There is time for rest, and then there is time to try and figure out how to get them back. Nariel's right, though. Mika. No, wait. What was your new name? Sorry? Antis. Antis. If we go now, we're just going to get captured ourselves. We're in no shape to fight. I'm trusting you to find them, Lady Lariel. Of course. Leave it up to us. With this battle one, we can focus not only finding them, but also making our way to finishing this battle once and for all. Even with this battle won, I'm sure that the city itself still still needs to be uh, pro- thoroughly uh, investigated through. Um, I believe I'm still able to stay around and make sure this city is held. Degault, uh, well, Lariel 
I thank you, Lady Lariel. I will not uh, fail you. And she'll look over to the rest of the group. My, my place is here at this point in time. As much as I did enjoy traveling with you all, you all have bigger things ahead of you but just know that I cherished every moment with you and if you ever need me never be afraid to um, give us a call <laughs> plus there's I do believe there is someone else who can fill this void in this group at this point He's not that far. Melvin Verbertown. <laughs> <laughs> and, Melvin. <laughs> and at that point, she'll kind of um, she'll turn, she'll give a give a bow to the leaders. She'll turn around and she'll just tap Macath on the shoulder or arm, depending on how tall Macath is now. So pull her into for a hug. Yeah. Um, and she'll just give the other two just a nod and she'll she'll pretty much walk out of the tent and her direction will be back to the city (laughs) so as the battle it does begin to come to a close is there anything you want to do at that current point in time over the next say half a day for the rest of the day as the battle is um, is waning as it's been won. There are forces that are surrounding, forces that aren't. If you're doing investigating or any uh, searching for anything or anything whatsoever, you can or you certainly do it. As it just trying to assist with the search for the, the G-Force? Okay, yeah. make me a investigation check. With advantage. Oh, no. oh, yeah, okay, 25. 25. So with the assistance of not only um, not only Spy Networks, which you actually managed to meet up with one that the one sole survivor of Spies from Ooh, the South hey. Tower. <laughs> he, he, got, fucked up. he survived. <laughs> His arms like anime wrecked. <laughs> Mate, uh, that, not just regular wrecked. That that guy <laughs> needs so much money, <laughs> especially in the search. Uh, just in the search, um, Icar with Ota being a part of the G Force and missing in action as well. Your search take you takes you back to the Iron King, to which you go into the great three story tower. Doing a thorough thorough search, you. Getting to a couple of battles with some die-hard Iron Circle fanatics that are more um, attributed to uh, just killing things. That's all we want to do. And as you spend a bit of the up, as you crawl through that tower, searching end on end, you come to the lower basement, in which you do find that there is. Um, Lingering magical effects in the room. You can also see the, the dark maroonish blood of the Kenya tieflings that have been uh, splashed on, splattered down on the ground. 
you want to have a <laughs> Yes, I do. How do you want to try to search? Um, you said there were lingering magical effects? Yes. I'm guessing, like, there's no one here still. No. At this point in time, we are saying that you have uh, come through the castle. You've secured it, you've moved through it, and this is the after effect, like, 11 o'clock that night. Um, I'll just see if I can pick up any, like, traces of teleportation, maybe to be able to track them or something. Yep, so make a card check. Ugh, what the? I can't believe it's still a 16 or a 1. Fuck me. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> That's a 35. On a 35. Oh. Um, yes, they definitely teleported out. There were two infernal beings that uh, basically from the lingering magic effects that you just picked up on the ley lines of magic that sort of keeps help. Um, basically, uh, the cube is shifting and pointing to um, the direction of the magic pick up. The cube analyzes it, analyzes it and you begin to figure it out in the meantime as well. They did incapacitate um, Bag of Nails, but Bag of Nails managed to break free. Uh, you can't find the remains, uh, you can't find the body of claws on strings, but there is a lot of bright red blood around one area that has a lot of fur scraps on the ground. Um, tiger hat fur scraps, which uh, calls on three points. In saying that, you also believe that the magical effects were, are lingering due to the Kenya Teethling blood. Do you know they teleported? And on a natural twin you have looked on a map it could be one of several locations that uh, they teleported to but a limited uh, could be limited it could not be but a hinted towards those locations on that map yeah yeah um, well yeah it's likely they went to one of their strongholds um I don't know which I still have the orb of scrying. Could I try and scry on uh, Ota? No, yep. Osa. On Osa? No, no, not Ota. <laughs> so she automatically fails her check because she's incapacitated. Okay. As you scry down below, your vision takes you out from your body, up into the sky overhead. You then pan down across the southeast of the continent, going over the uh, going over the Never Hills, uh, Never Mountains, then heading more towards the south, going through the rolling fields, um, and then eventually making your way not to River Garden, which I'll pop you there for a second. <laughs> It was not really good at all. Basically, go over the Glake, Great Book Hills, marshlands, rolling fields until you reach the northern section of the Sunset Mountains. And you only know the Sunset Mountains because uh, there was a location there, and there you can see your reach. Your sight doesn't get any further beyond. It looks to be a dead volcano, huge in size and structure. Um, the surrounding fields, you can see that there are bones lit, gigantic bones littered everywhere. Volcanic tunnels and passages, the entire, a large ravine basically sets out towards the, um, towards the east, or towards the west. Also factors in going towards the desert to north, which has basically become a barren wasteland. All around this, uh, around this dead, burnt-out volcano, in a 
a crater flying around hundreds of dragons, thousands of lightnings, monstrous creatures all around. Make another arcana check real quick. As the cube basically throws out a threat. Same, 29. Same. Nice oh, roll. See a flicker of that dark palace you've been seeing in your nightmares last night. You've seen the apostles of the world approach you. The apostles? Well, not the apostles. But you've been seeing the scenes of a burning. Burning world, a frozen landscape, um, just basically all the effects of humans rain over the land. Uh, at the end of all your dreams, you've seen a large, multi spired jagged palace. And for just a glimpse, just a small little fraction of a section, second, it appears and disappears instantly. Flickering in and out. Use us. Who's us? Can I say that? Like in my mind? Like, who are you? We many. What are you? Multiple at the same time you hear life. to use some unknown power because of past events <laughs> Belvin especially being looking in, uh, <laughs> looking with, with the cube as well as the cube speaking to you uh, it's like a multitude of the voices coming from different kind of personalities and these personalities have been developed from um, there's only about three voices you're hearing at the moment each reflective of one's very aggressive in the way that the walk the creek with is. Another is very inviting. We're going to turn the camera over towards Ikram. Proteges has been abducted. Yeah, I uh, didn't. But would we we'd know about the location because of um, Luke's? Yeah, well, we just found out. Like I'm guessing that we like he's told all of us. I would, yeah. Yeah. After we found out. Yeah, coming out of the um, divination, <laughs> we found their hideout, but. <laughs> It's not somewhere we can really go at the moment because of the army of dragons. We should still try. Who? Oh. It's that moment you hear the ripple of the door, like that ringing. sound echoes through the world again. Is that the 
does Antis recognize that as a dracon? That tickles me. You do recognize it as a dracon, even more so. You feel its core. You do resist it, but you can hear there's something about it, the understanding of the message, but it's not clear. Do I have like an inclination? Like I know I resisted it. Yeah. But was there like a slight was there like a thought that popped into my head to go and do something and then yes, it's absolutely. gone? Absolutely. Um it pops in for just a second, but then is wish uh, washed away. It is a calling of gather. Kazmir, did you say there was a massive group of dragons? They darkened the sky. Hundreds. They're using the Drakhorn to summon them. The Drakhorn is also there. We have to destroy it. Yes. You realize that upon Antis uh, having an understanding of the corn, uh, an idea of the nature of the core of um, call signs, signals, and uh, messages through the cries and voices and such, that there is possibly a code to these calls. Especially if Artis is telling you that they are trying to gather draconic beings and monstrosities to wherever their strong is. Hmm. Would there be a way that I could decipher the code, or is there any like would any of you guys be able to decipher this code? Make me a nature check. Uh, yes, please. 17. Uh, it would require a better understanding of um, better understanding of language and also someone who can directly hear the uh, hear the codes and messages that they feel. Um, you would need to work with Antis and Antis would need to get, uh, gain a better grasp of her ability to listen to this call. Especially if you want to understand the messages or even use the messages against them. How did you say RT? RTs? Aunties. Aunties, sorry. Um, the eight foot draconic sorcery yeah. sitting next to you. Yeah, sorry. Um, getting used to the new name. Um, so, she, so you understand the language. It was like a thought came into my head to go there, and then I sort of brushed it off. Are we all hearing the same thing, like, coming through? Yeah, it's all the same call. Just a massive rolling. Okay. So... It's not so much, it felt like, it wasn't so much someone telling me to go, it was more like, maybe going there is a good idea. I wonder if it'd be worth us going and getting the third god plate and, um, and then going. It might help. That's the big question, right? Like... <laughs> Like, I don't know if it's going to make, like, me stronger or, like, help in any way. Need a power-up. Training montage. You all, have some, <laughs> you all have some options, and there are some questions to be answered, especially uh, up north in the void and with the uh, Council of Dragons, which we invited to as well. 
but more so as you were leaving the as you were packing up and leaving the keep uh, as the night grows weary and the um, fires of the city are put out but still the torches and sconces are still illuminating the majority of the, the roads um, leaving the Leaving the keep deep in the night. You see a large, well physiqued form at the end of at the end of a street. City at the end of a city street. Familiar. A little bit. It's mostly the armor that gives it away. Big hulking the sword that shines with the light of hell. You can pretty much tell them. The large form of the void. It's a tiny Belvin. It's a tiny <laughs> He's it's like in the distance, he looks really big, and then he walks up, and he's just gets shorter. <laughs> no, we think he's he, he's just short because he's far away, but he doesn't actually get any bigger. Or, yeah, we think it's yeah, we think he's far away, but he's actually right in front of us. <laughs> yeah. <Is that fun? laughs> well, you've heard of what's happened in the last couple of hours oh, since the start of the day. Really. Um, Belvin's just gonna walk up just slowly to him just and just stop. He himself is just like blood and mud caked everything as well on his armor. It's just like, it's good to see you all again. And he's, and he's just gonna, he's just gonna get down on his, on one knee, just head down. And I'd like to beg forgiveness for you all on leaving. Where have you been? I... I felt it upon myself to right the wrongs that I did. So I left to finally get rid of Black Razor's influence once and for all. Did you succeed? I was. I, I was successful. Black Razor is no more. And also Sir Istival. Uh, has been revived. Nice. Hold that for a high five. <laughs> <laughs> he'll he'll high five you back. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad yeah. not much has changed. With I'm you, easy Vikram. to forgive. <laughs> he'll he'll awesome. kind of gla- he'll glance up at Casimir and. That is good, Belvin, but we definitely could have used your help here. Least of all, maybe alive, but Sandstorm isn't. What? Last time I heard, he was doing fine before today. What happened? Doing fine is a bit of an overstatement. <laughs> Look, I know it's probably hurt most of you that I left. And there wasn't a moment as when I was gone that I didn't feel terrible for it. Belvin, but- I don't care if you felt like you needed to do this alone. That's up to you. 
but you did leave your only brother. You left him alone, no family. He had you guys, though. I... You know we can only I, do so much. I thought for sure, like, he would have been, he would have been fine with you. What if you didn't come back? We couldn't guarantee on you ever coming back. <laughs> I appreciate you're here. But that's it. I deserve that. But I am here to offer myself to ages again. I'm totally fine if you don't want to depend on me for certain things. I would be here just for just to be your shield again. Well, it would be foolish to turn you away, but I'd be lying if I said I could trust you completely. I'd be surprised if you... if you didn't, Kazimir. And under that cold spring mat, clouds have gathered light drizzle the one down session <laughs> as our party reaches level 50 yay <laughs> in this depressing mood <laughs> bit of sweet victory and we'll pick up next week for more dragon brew D&D where our party can uh, now have a variety of choices to make in what route they want to partake and find out information or gain a bit more allies and until <sighs> then uh, friends, foes and families thank you so much for uh, sticking with us tonight it was a intense intense battle at the start and my god I was not expecting it to go the way it uh, did because yeah in an instant y'all decimated <laughs> once that scale was broken yeah she did not well, have a lot of health she did not anyway let's get this sad music out of the way and let's get on back to a bit a uh, bit more a bit more happy house as we will be back <laughs> next week for some dragons brew dnd &D. you can catch me over on tall scores channel as well on sunday mor mornings 4 a.m australian east 4 a.m australian east no 5 a.m australian eastern uh, standard time or 3 p.m pacific time uh, until then friends foes and familiars keep rolling 20s i rolled a four Roll four. <laughs> that, that describes the mood Sorted at the, the end. <laughs> <Yeah>, four. <laughs> yep. <laughs>